Hey guys, welcome back. I've got the mower here that I showed you in a short video earlier this week. That's the mower that rolled in the shop and when I pull it over, it spins over as if there's no spark plug in it. No compression, no resistance whatsoever. Now I did ask you guys to comment in the short video that I posted on it to see what you guys think is wrong with it. I've got a lot of responses and most people are commenting that they think it's the connecting rod that's broken inside the engine. And personally, that's my guess as well. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, is check the oil level. And that's usually telling if you have oil or if you don't have oil as to what may have happened. Now there's lots of oil in this machine. So whatever happened did not happen for a lack of oil, that's for sure. And when I get mowers like this in the shop that the engine just spins like this or the engine is blown, what I usually do is flip the machine over. And I usually check for telltale signs that the mower may have hit something like a rock or a stump. But in this case, I see no signs whatsoever that it hit a rock, a tree stump, or who knows what. This is all in good shape. The customer brought it in. He said it just won't run anymore. He didn't tell me that it hit anything or that he ran it low in oil or anything like that. So it's a bit unusual without hitting something, without running out of oil, to have an engine blown up. Now there can be some other telltale signs that may be visible and I do see some here that may tell you that a machine has like a million miles on it. And what I'm noticing on this machine here is every wheel has no tread left on any single one of them. Now this is a self-propelled machine. It is rear wheel drive. So it's normal to see the back wheels stripped of any tread, but to see the front ones, that's a bit unusual. And the guy did tell me that it's been used a lot. So what I'm thinking has happened here is it's got a lot of miles. The oil may not have been changed regularly. So even though you may have oil in your machine, if it's like super black with no viscosity left, you may end up with an issue like this. And again, I really think that it's the connecting rod that has snapped from the crankshaft. And first of all, before I rip the engine open to find out what's going on, I will drain the engine of all the oil so that I don't have a mess on my table. Now it is awkward with these machines because they don't have a proper oil drain plug underneath the engine. So I'm just going to flip it over for today. And I've got it draining. There's actually not that much oil in these engines. And while it's draining, I'm going to remove the blades, get the belt off the pulley here. By the way, these are 14 millimeter head bolts. That's good that everything came off quite easily here. Now, if you go to take off the blade adapter on your machine and it's totally seized on the shaft, I do have a video that will show you how to do that in a step-by-step -step fashion. And the link is under the video description. Now, there's a small key here. There we go. Now I'm gonna take this cover off. Now I'll disconnect the brake cable from the engine. And here's the oil that came out of that engine. It's basically like molasses. Now on this machine here, there are three bolts that hold the engine to the mower. One, two, three, or maybe four. And you'll need a 12 millimeter socket for these. Okay, now the engine's completely off. Okay, let's get that engine here.
Now the body of the mower is in not bad shape. Actually, this could be reused and somebody could just replace the wheels. Now, if I look at the engine, I don't see any signs of a cracked block. So I'm curious to take this apart, guys. And I'll shove this on my work table. Oh, I just heard some noise from inside the crankcase. Okay, what I'm gonna do here, guys, is shake this engine. So you can hear the parts in there. All right, let's rip this open. Okay, I decided to put a cardboard here because more than likely there will still be some oil coming out. Now there's a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts that hold the sump cover on. I can see two more bolts here under the gas tank. One more right here. These engines here are very different from the Briggs engines on mowers that you mostly find. Just taking them apart is a lot different. Now I do have to remove this pulley and let's hope it's not seized. Wow, that's amazing. I thought for sure it would be seized. By the way guys, these are very expensive pulleys now from Honda. So this one here, I will save it because it's still good. Now I'm gonna take off the governor arm here because it's still attached to the linkages. I normally would not take the governor arm off when I work on an engine because it can be a pain in the you know what to set it back properly but I cannot see myself fixing this engine so I'm just going to take it right right off here okay now I'm going to separate that engine using this uh, rubber mallet here and if you do these kinds of jobs guys wear safety glasses because sometimes little little pieces off the hammer may fly or off the machine or engine and get right in your eyes. Sometimes the sump covers on these Honda engines can be on there quite tight. This one's not too bad. Okay, pieces are already falling out, guys. Let's pull the cover off. And it's pretty well what we all thought it was. A snapped connecting rod, look at that. It's really rare, guys, that I would see a snap connecting rod on a Honda engine, even though it still has oil in it. But again, it could have been because the oil was so old. There's the timing belt. There's another piece of the connecting rod. Now on this engine here, the cylinder and pretty well the head are all part of the same piece. So basically you can just take the cover off here, but everything else is all part of the block. Now I believe the carburetor is still good, so I'm gonna take that off right now, and then I'll take the valve cover off. Now this is the engine here with the auto choke. It's the one with the dreaded little thermal wax cartridge. But this one's still good because the pin is retracted. It's not sticking out. So I'm actually going to save this. So I can save the carburetor and the linkage. Look at all the oil coming out now. Okay. okay. 
Now what I'd like to save as well on these engines is the fuel shutoff valve. And also this small governor spring here. Now you can save the coil on the flywheel if you want to, but it's extremely rare that I replace a coil on these Honda engines, but I will still save it anyway. Another thing I like to save as well is the muffler cover here because sometimes machines come in and this part here that goes around the muffler is all destroyed. It's rare that I need to replace a muffler, but it's more common to replace this cover here, so I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to take this valve cover off. And this one looks like it's actually been taken off before because I can see some type of gasket sealant here. See that right here? That's not from the factory. And it's the same on the other bolt here. Now, if you wanted to here, you could save the plastic cam gear. Uh, you could always save the rocker arms if you want. All you have to do for that is just pull this pin out. And it'll come right off. And sometimes I'll check to see if the valves are seized or not. I just push on them. So it looks like the valves were not seized. Actually, what I might do is take the flywheel off so that I can remove the crankshaft. Then we can have a look inside the cylinder. Here, let's get this off. Okay, you'll need a 19 mil socket for this. Okay, now I've got my safety glasses on and I'm gonna whack this shaft here because I don't care if I damage it or not. That little flywheel is pretty tight. There. Now I gotta get this little key off here. So I might as well show you guys here how to get the plastic cam gear off, you just grab this piece here, this shaft, and just pull. Now I can get that belt out of the way, just a tiny timing belt. Okay, now I'm going to pound the crankshaft out. Oh, it's coming out quite easy. Now I want to get that piston out of here. It actually seems quite tight in there. Oh yeah, it's kind of seized in there. Actually, I'm gonna try to pound the piston out through the spark plug hole. There. So my punch was getting stuck in the spark plug hole. So here's an old screwdriver. Okay, let's have a close look here. Now these marks are from my punch and a screwdriver, but there's quite a bit of carbon. So it's kind of hard to tell here exactly what caused this. There's no real smoking gun on it, just basically assumptions based on what I can see. Old oil, lots of miles on the machine. The cylinder actually is smooth. It's not all scored. The other thing too that can make an engine do this, even if it doesn't have a million miles or old oil, is if an engine over revs. If your engine over revs, it doesn't matter how new it is, how good the oil is and the maintenance, it will pop a rod. So that could also be a possibility here. But when you look at this whole engine here, there's not that much I'm going to save. I'll save the gas tank recoil, uh, the muffler cover. I might save the flywheel because I actually don't have one in my collection. 
And then there's the carburetor, air filter assembly. So I'll just separate what I'm keeping here. And most of the rest is just going to go in a scrap bin. This is a good part as well here to save. It's part of the auto choke. So that's going to go in that pile. And I will save some of the rocker arms because I did have one machine this summer where the actual rock, rocker arm was bent. And it came in handy that I had some in my, in my sheds. So definitely keep those. And another good part to save is the valve cover because sometimes they come in the shop and they're all bent or smashed in. And the small pulley from the machine and the flywheel nut, I usually save those. Carburetor. But most of this right here is going in the scrap. Here's a look at the crankshaft where the rod was bolted on. It basically has residue of aluminum from the connecting rod. Here's the governor gear. It's damaged. Look at the sludge in the sump cover. This is basically sludge from old oil. Man, what a mess, eh? Look at that. Look at that. All right, so that does it for this teardown. Another one less gas engine left in the world after today. And soon all the lawnmowers in the future will be electric, guys. So uh, we still have a few years left with gas engines, but the writing's on the wall, I think, for that, for that aspect of the small engine industry. So that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully it's kind of helped you to figure out what parts to keep and not to keep when you have a scrapped engine like this. There will definitely be more teardown videos, guys, as I get equipment in the shop now. I'm just going to basically tear them apart like this and make a video just so you guys can see what's happened inside that engine. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Also, make sure to subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.